Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for tonight's presentation. Um, we are officially starting right now. Uh, all, what you see on the welcome screen right now is a big welcome message with our little owl with a little webcam, some headphones and a computer. And before we jump right in to some of the neat information we'll be sharing with you this evening, I want to let everybody know that we can't hear you or see you. And that will be um, how it is all evening. The only thing you'll see and hear is me and perhaps some owl calls this evening. Um, if you would like to test out the chat, I do see a lot of people already are. Um, if you are having some um, issues, you will have a few moments to check your audio. I do see that there are some audio issues, um, but no worries. Um, it may be on your computer, it may be on your settings. We did test our audio settings this evening before we got started. Um, hello to everyone. I do see some highs in the chat here. And if you would like to test out your chat by letting us know your favorite owl, this evening, I've already seen some really great answers to that, so thank you. So again, welcome. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight for Nevada Department of Wildlife, a conservation education program. Tonight, we're going to be talking about owl identification specifically. This is part of a series, it's a birding identification series and I believe this is one of the last webinars. It is a little bit of an extension from last week's um, webinar where we talked about raptor identification. And a big shout out to our volunteer instructor, Sonia, who will be managing things on the back end. She is a pro moderator. If anyone has any questions, you can type those in in the Q&A box, the question and answer box. Sonia will be watching that area and answering those questions live. Um, that's not something that I'll be watching. I will be watching the chat um, and I'll have some questions and some conversation with everyone through the chat box. So, and I'll be watching the whole time. So if you'd like to chat with me, answer the questions I'll pose to the audience later on, that's where you can type live to me and I can see that. But again, questions, um, go ahead and put those through the Q&A box. Sonia will be watching that behind the scenes. I do also want to let everyone know that tonight is a family program and is rated PG. Uh, we will not tolerate any profanity, inappropriate behavior. I have the um, I have the right to kick people out, although I don't want to do that. So I just want to let everyone know, you know, you know, let's keep it PG, let's keep it fun, let's keep it friendly. And uh, um, if you would like to contact me apart from tonight's presentation. Um, my contact information is on the screen. I work for Nevada Department of Wildlife. I am the Southern Region Wildlife Education Coordinator. Um, so this is a part of my job. I get to educate people about how amazing and awesome our wildlife is. Owls are actually my very favorite topic. So I'm absolutely excited for tonight. All right, so like I said, we are going to be talking about some owl identification. Um, we will be showcasing some of our species, mainly the seven species that are found in Nevada, common to Nevada. Some of them are found all over the place, all over North America, South America, even all over the world. But if you are from Nevada, you will be a pro, hopefully, in identifying some of the owls that are common in this state. We'll be looking at special characteristics first, um, special features, identification basics, what to look for. And those are four main key things to look for when out birding in general. But we'll also talk about what those key things are when birding for owls. And then lastly, we'll do some species showcases. 
When we do talk about these seven owl species, we're gonna be talking about field markings with lots of beautiful pictures, just to give you an example of different poses, different coloration, different patterns for their plumage. We'll also be noting some nesting behavior where you might find nests. Um, also the owl's hunting behavior and where you might find them hunting. And of course, the best time to go birding for that owl. And then after that, we are going to test your knowledge. Um, and that's why, uh, that's why we're gonna be testing at the chat now so that when that time comes, uh, you'll know how to use the chat and type in those answers. And for those of us who are watching this later on through YouTube, I'll be shouting out some of those questions, some of those answers as they're rolling in so you can play along even if you're not watching live. All right, so first, some special characteristics of owls. Uh, of course, they are wild. They can take care of themselves. Wild animals, are animals that do not depend on humans for survival. They can take care of themselves. Um, most owls are nocturnal. That's why I have that little asterisk there. Owls are typically nocturnal or crepuscular, meaning they're alert dawn and dusk. There's no, um, or there is one owl in particular that is diurnal, which is alert during the day that we'll talk about in a few moments. Activity patterns though can change seasonally and vary from one individual or even a region to another. Generally, more energy is required during breeding season, which means owls are hunting for longer periods. So the nocturnal activity that we'll be talking about will always sort of vary depending on the time of year. Um, owls are birds of prey or also called raptors. So raptors are birds that are carnivorous and hunt other animals for food. And we'll be talking about some diets of some of these owls. They also have some special physical characteristics that help them do that, that help them be carnivorous, um, including a sharp hooked beak and sharp talons, for example. One of my favorite um, characteristics about owls is that they are specially camouflaged, which means they are excellent at blending into their surroundings, their environments in different ways. So since most owls are nocturnal and all owls are carnivorous, being able to blend in and not be seen helps them avoid being seen by their predators and even humans. Um, for example, one owl that we will be talking about this evening is the sawwet owl, which some of you mentioned was your very favorite in the chat. Um, this owl stays as still as possible as a defense mechanism if they're seen. Uh, this might appear like the owl is tame or comfortable with people, but that doesn't mean they are and we should never approach them. Um, they're just holding still to camouflage better within their surroundings. And that's just one more point to send home that they are wild animals. So this is my favorite owl. This is a barn owl. Um, we are going to talk about some special features. So first they have a facial disc. So most owl species will have a very distinct facial disc. Um, around their face that helps funnel sound to their ears. Every extra little bit of getting sound to where it needs to be helps an owl hunt. Uh, we'll also be talking a little bit about their feathers and wings, plumage coloration, and their field markings, kind of one in the same, and also their feather shape and wing span shape. So feathers can help keep them warm. Uh, they also provide structure and feathers, of course, help them stay camouflaged. And feathers also let them fly silently. So owls in particular have special structures along the leading edge of their wings, which is here along this leading edge here. So when the wind hits that edge of the wing first, uh, the special structure along that edge of the wing breaks up that uh, wind breaks up that air so they fly silently to help sneak up on their prey. 
We will be talking a little bit about their ears, but first I do want to mention that owl's ears for the most part are asymmetrical or lopsided, meaning that one ear is higher than the other on their skull. Typically their right ear is slightly higher than their left ear. And this just helps them in a, a pitch dark or dark environment, you know, everything that they can hear um, helps them hunt, find their prey. Eyes, so eyes are spherical and locked in their eye sockets. This means they can't look around using their eyes like we can. They have to look around using their heads. You know, that's how they have all this mobility here in their neck. Uh, this also allows for their eyes to have zero blood vessels, which eliminates blind spots. Humans have blood vessels, you know, when we're really tired, we can see all those bloodshot eyes, those blood vessels in our eyes. Uh, we also have blind spots. Um, owls don't have that. Their eyes are also forward facing, sort of, you know, like us, which gives them binocular vision similar to humans. Um, owls also have a third special eyelid called a nictitating membrane, and you won't be able to see this in any of the pictures or even while birding, it's super rare. It's basically a third, almost translucent um, eyelid that just helps protect the eye and keep it moist. Um, they also have a sharp hook being the characteristics that makes owls birds of prey or raptors. Um, and they also have sharp talons. Again, that's why they're birds of prey. Both the sharp hook beak and the sharp talons help owls latch on to prey, rip flesh apart. Um, yeah, all of these things we will mention a little bit later, uh, depending on the species. So owl identification basics. So before we jump into some of the specific species showcases tonight, uh, these are some things we want to think about when identifying owls. Um, owls first belong to one of two families, Tidonidae, which is barn and bay owls. The only owl in North America in the Tidonidae family is the barn owl, which is my favorite. Um, and the Strigidae, which is all other owls. And I'll mention which family each owl belongs to. Um, um, <laughs> some owls have tufts. So too tuft or not too tuft means some owls have tufts, which are feathers right here where, where ears would be on some animals. Um, those with ear tufts or little feather horns are called tufted owls. And those with rounded heads or no tufts are called round headed owls. I know, super technical. Uh, we'll also be talking about field markings. That's the one of the number one things we can look at when identifying an owl. Um, we're going to be looking at plumage patterns, specific markings, um, eye and bill color, things like that. We'll also be looking at hunting techniques and sometimes nesting techniques. So this is particular to birders. And if you are a birder, awesome. If you're a beginner birder, awesome. Um, we're going to be talking about this particularly because when we're out looking for owls, when we're out birding, these are the things that we look for. These are some of the behaviors that we keep an eye out. Um, sometimes we'll see an owl just perching. Sometimes we'll see an owl leaving or entering a nest, but sometimes we'll also see an owl hunting. So we'll be talking about what those things are. And of course, vocalizing. Um, just from experience, um, listening for owl calls or bird calls is a great way to A, identify an owl um, if you're good at it, which some of us aren't, <laughs> but that's okay. It just takes practice. Um, but it also helps sort of tell us where the owl is. So if we're walking down a path and you hear a call, we can sort of guide our path, guide our nature walk to that direction and we might, we might get a, a better glimpse of the owl. But because owls vocalize at a, a very low frequency, their songs can travel longer distances so we can hear them better. 
um, and it, they're not absorbed by the vegetation or the trees or anything. All right, so these are the four key features to look for when identifying um, any bird really, but owls in particular too. So, and I'll mention all of these things um, when we go into some of our species showcase, which is next. I'm so excited about it. So first I'll mention size and shape, and I'll also compare the size to another, another bird that we are um, pretty used to like a robin or a crow. Um, I do see that some of us are mentioning that the great horned owl, burrowing owl, um, Anna and Elena from Montana, hey, their favorites are the snowy owl and the great horned owl, hey everybody. Uh, so first we'll mention size and shape, then we'll mention plumage patterns or field marking, sort of one of the same. Um, and then we'll mention behavior, we mentioned that, but every species behaves differently. We'll talk about when they're awake and alert, nocturnal versus diurnal. Uh, we'll also talk about what they do when they feel threatened or when we can find them. And then I have some calls to share. And um, if you wanted to take a moment, turn up your speakers just a little bit. Um, I'm wearing headphones so I can hear the calls, but I also wanna make sure all of you can hear the calls as well. All right, so let's jump in to some of our species identification. So um, I built this or we built this presentation specific for an audience virtually. So while we're moving through these species, I will give everyone a few moments to see if they already know what the species is. So in the chat, the next species that comes up I'm gonna give everyone a few moments to see if they already know what it is. Some of them are easy, some of them are pretty difficult. Um, but while we're talking, you know, while I'm sharing some of the information about identification, you know, go ahead and guess in the chat and then I'll give you the answer. So use the chat box to identify the owl before the answer is shown. Okay, here's the first one. So this owl, <laughs> This owl is already a lot of folks' favorites, I can see in the chat. Um, these owls are between the size of a crow and a goose. They are thick-bodied, mottled, gray, brown-ish. Um, they do have a very distinct pattern on their chest, and you can see that right here on the picture on the left. That pattern of um, squiggly lines going across like that is called vermiculation. So this owl is, um, I'll just tell you, it's the great horned owl, everyone's getting it right, good job. So great horned owls do have that vermiculation across their chest um, and reddish brown faces with a neat white patch on their throat right below their chin. This white patch can range in size and sometimes can really stand out, sometimes and can barely be seen. They have a distinct reddish cinnamon colored facial disc outlined in dark brown black that you can see right here around their eyes. They also have very sharp talons, which again is one of the reasons why we consider them raptors and their legs and feet are covered in light tan feathers. Uh, you can't really see in the picture on the left there, but they do have that. Their overall plumage color ranges depending on their region, um, but for the most part they're sooty dark gray to pale gray with a little bit of buff brown tan. Um, and lastly they have two tufts on either side of their head, these guys right here, these little um, feathers up here, yellow eyes and a dark rounded bill. Their wingspan is between three and four and a half feet and they're usually around two feet in height. Um, Stacy is telling us that the oldest great horned owl on record was at least 21, or sorry, 28 years old. That's correct, I, di I did know that fact. And when it was found in Ohio in 2005, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing. Um, this owl, great horned owls, they are nocturnal, meaning they're alert at night. They can be seen at dusk, sitting on fence posts or in trees on the edges of open areas. 
or flying across roads or fields. Great information if you're birding for these, for these birds. Um, they can be incredible difficult to spot though. So since their plumage and coloration allows them to camouflage in their environment so well, like you can see in these two pictures, their backs are a little bit more sooty gray, um, really blending in with their with trees and fence posts and things like that. And then their underparts and the insides of their wings, um, the insides of their very broad rounded wings are lighter in color, some checkerboard pattern going on. Um, and what's very cool about these owls is where when they're in flight with their broad rounded off wings, their head and short bill sort of combine like this to create a blunt headed silhouette. Um, and this might help you with birding right here along their shoulders. So great horned owls can nest basically anywhere from trees to cacti to cliffs and cliff faces. They're known to be seen though near woodland swamps and orchards and even agricultural areas, uh, forests, fields, deserts, wetlands, even residential areas. In fact, uh, in my resident residential area, we have a, a pair of great horned owls about four blocks down and we do hear them when we go out on walks. It's very, very cool. Um, they have an extremely diverse diet eating basically anything that they can get their talons or beak on. And that can be rodents, insects, birds, go including gophers, marmots, even cats, uh, ravens, hawks, rabbits, hares, fish, squirrels, even ducks. Um, although they're nocturnal, they've been seen hunting during broad daylight if the opportunity pre pre presents itself. And then I also wanted to show everyone the um, young owls. We also call them owlets. Uh, they do also blend in extremely well with their environment, having this dusky buff colored fluff. All right, next owl. I'm pretty sure everyone will get this one, but this owl. Yeah, uh, Tracy, thank you for mentioning be careful with little dogs too. Um, cats, dogs, absolutely. And that was with the great horned owl. Uh, this is our second owl. These are small owls. Uh, their size is between a robin and a crow. They're small, round headed, sandy colored owls that live on the ground. They have long legs, bright yellow eyes, white charismatic eyebrows, and some have light colored narrow patches right below their sharp hooked beaks. These, um, these owls that we see in the picture do have this patch that rests right around here. So yeah, everyone got this one right. This is a burrowing owl. Um, unlike great horned owls though, burrowing owls are diurnal. This is that one species of owl that's alert during the day. Um, their field markings show uh, mottled brown with sandy pale spots and um, lighter colored underparts. Their breast is spotted grading to a dark brown um, and then they, it gradually um, gets darker as it gets up to its chest, but you'll see these dark brown bars across their belly and their chest. They also have bright white throats. So we mentioned that patch earlier, right? And those, um, those bright eyebrows with yellow eyes, which is typically what they're known for. They really have charismatic um, facial expressions too. Uh, burrowing owls do live underground in burrows they've dug for themselves or in burrows taken over by ground squirrels, tortoises, skunks, badgers, or other rodents. Um, their burrows can be found in open grasslands, open deserts, open plains, even wide expanses of short vegetation, uh, ditches, or hilly culvert areas. For birders, um, fledglings or owlets may be seen um, hanging out near burrow entrances, like this middle picture we have on the screen there. Um, and uh, some of these owlets noticeably have some of, some of the adult plumage, but they're not as spotted 
and they're a lot less mottled. Um, they have um, some creamy or buffy yellow underparts, but still that fluff is showing. Um, burrowing owls do live um, in loose colonies where adults will take turns standing guard near, um, near nest burrows. But during breeding, se to that, during breeding season, they may be active 24 hours a day, taking shifts, standing guard and hunting at the same time while protecting. They mainly hunt close to the ground by hovering and flying low. Um, I've even seen burrowing owls like running after prey or hopping um, after prey. Most of their diet is insects, grasshoppers, uh, crickets, moths, beetles, caterpillars, even scorpions. Um, some lizards, snakes, frogs, um, toads, turtles, small birds, even small rodents. But when birding and looking for burrowing owls, a spotting scope may be helpful. I am not very successful <laughs> in looking for burrowing owls. I, I do see in the chat that um, in, in Arizona, development is taking over their habitat. That happens here too. Um, there's a really large burrowing owl um, population and they're protected near Cape Coral in Florida. That's pretty cool. Um, so while you're out birding for burrowing owls, you might not actually see the full owl. You might just see their little heads popping up with their little yellow eyes. And they might be staring directly at you, which is typically what I've seen just from experience. But you also need a lot of patience and time to scan along the horizon in, uh, in an, a habitat where they're likely found. All right, next owl. Everyone will get this one. I am absolutely sure of it. This is the only owl um, in North America anyway that is in the family Titonidae. Oh, I see a lot of chats coming. Yep. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the barn owl. This is my favorite owl. They're so cool. They're so fascinating. Uh, barn owls are medium sized, also crow sized, kind of around the same, same size there. They're pale, lanky birds with whitish heart shaped facial discs. Um, and I've got an arrow pointing to that facial disc looking right at the camera there. They have rounded heads and dark, dark eyes. Their wings are long and rounded. Um, and they have a short tail. All of those characteristics combine to give them sort of a bouncy, buoyant, looping flight pattern that's really distinctive from other owls. Um, kind of like a bouncing moth when they fly, just not as sporadic. There is another owl that has a similar flight pattern, but we'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, Barn owls are nocturnal, but there is a little bit of an asterisk there. They can leave the roost uh, to start hunting early in the evening during the day, which I have seen, um, but typically they are nocturnal. Um, these owls are pale overall with dark eyes, as we've already, as we've already mentioned, um, but they do have a mix of buff and gray on their head, their back, and their upper wings, and then their white to pale buff on their body, their face, and their underwings. And both pictures you see on the left there, it shows their backside and their chest breast region. Um, their pale facial disc is normally what makes them stand out. Um, and their dusky buff brown gray <laughs> coloration on their backsides help them stay camouflaged in their environments. Uh, one picture that I did want to very briefly mention is that there are some color variation in barn owls where some will have a more typical pale color and then some will have a sandy dusky darker brown color. This, this doesn't really um, help us tell the difference between male and female, but on well-lit moonlit nights, this difference in coloration can have an effect on hunting success for barn owls. 
where this lighter color on their underparts can sort of shock um, a vole or a mouse or a rat that they may be hunting. And it will create sort of a deer in the headlights effect for their prey. So a um, whiter or paler color owl in some regions may be a little bit more successful with voles or smaller rodents. But in other regions, this um, dusky, sandy color may have a, a better effect on hunting. So it just depends on the region, which I thought was super fascinating. Um, I am seeing in the chat that, I don't know who it was, from Stacy, the oldest known North American barn owl lived in Ohio and was at least 15 years, five months old. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I do see also from Stacy, I think that um, barn owls do sort of um, build uh, a little bit of their nests by regurgitating their pellets. Pellets are something that we're not going to get to tonight. That's a whole nother presentation. But um, I, I will let you know that on our YouTube page, I did a, a, um, an owl pellet dissection live. And we, I took the camera, put it right up close to the owl pellet and we dissected the pellet. And we actually found three skulls. We got really, really lucky. Um, so yeah, these regurgitated pellets will be shredded with their feet and then sort of like arranged into a cup. So yes, Stacy, thank you so much for sharing. That's awesome. And yes, so a little bit more about the barn owl and then we'll jump into our next species. So barn owls eat mostly rodents. I may have already mentioned that, mainly voles, but also shrews, even bats. Um, and other small mammals and sometimes even birds. They do hunt at dusk and at night. And the way that they hunt is slowly, slowly flying over open fields with slow wing beats and a looping buoyant bouncy flight pattern, sort of like a moth that I mentioned earlier. Their heart-shaped facial disc helps guide sound directly into their ears, which um, aids in their amazing hearing. Uh, barn owls can be spotted if you're a birder, roosting in hidden quiet places during the day. Um, not necessarily in their nests though. And at night, they can be spotted hunting by flying and gliding over open meadows and open fields. Um, birders can also listen for their calls. And I do have a call to share with you. It's an eerie, raspy um, call. So hang tight. I'm going to share this call with you. So it's not necessarily a call that we're used to hearing. Um, and I also wanted to share with you some of the calls from um, some of the calls from a great horned owl as well. Even though we've gone past the great horned owl, I wanted to play it here so that we can compare uh, a great horned owl to a barn owl. So what we just heard was a barn owl. This is more of a well-known sound, but this call in particular is a great horned owl. And that's that the hoo 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 sound that we're that we're really accustomed to really. I do see in the chat that a couple of you can't hear the calls. Um, it may be a setting on your end, but no worries. I will also share where you can find all these calls. Um, I will actually put it in the chat right now. The website is called allaboutbirds.org. Okay, I put it in the chat. You can go there. Um, that's where I found all these calls. They are um, 
copyright friendly because we're using them for education purposes, but this is um, by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. It's a wonderful resource and I'll, I'll put it in, um, I'll put it in the chat um, now, again, allaboutbirds.org. And it will also be um, a resource that we'll chat about later as well. All right, all right, moving on to our next species. Um, I won't tell you what this one is right away, just like we've been doing. This owl is small robin sized, stocky, uh, grayish to brownish owls with yellow eyes, uh, dark beaks and small ear tufts. You can barely see them, but they are there. I also have the arrow pointing out the bottom part of this owl's facial disc. Um, although females are a little larger than males, both sexes are usually gray to brownish with dark and light variation streaks on their chests, white wing bars, which I'll show you in a moment, and white streaks on their shoulders. So their darker outlined facial disc is one of the key features to look for. Uh, chicks and owlets are more gray brown with less distinct barring, but they look pretty similar. So <laughs> yes, this is a Western screech owl. Really great job, everyone. So Western screech owls are nocturnal hunters and are superbly camouflaged with that base color that can be grayish or brownish or a combination of both. And then their underparts are flecked with white and their breast and belly are pale with dark spidery streaks like we've talked about. Their face is pale and outlined with those dark arcs. That's that facial disc that's being outlined. And this middle picture here are some, uh, some chicks or owlets, as we sometimes call them, depending on their um, growth development stage. But I wanted to point out their shape of their face is relatively similar to the adults. It's just their coloration still needs to come in a little bit. Uh, these owls are mainly found in forested habitat. So if you're birding, that's where you can look out for them. They can be especially found in um, or along the edges of bands of deciduous trees along canyons, but they're pretty adaptable. So they can also be found in residential areas. My parents have a Western screech owl living in their tree in their yard. <laughs> um, also in parks, deserts, coastal areas and mountains up to 6,000 feet. And I wanted to share with you their call as well. So let me give me a moment. I'm just gonna go to theirs. And they actually have a few different calls. So I'll play a few. This is one. This is the most common, commonly heard. And then here is another. A little bit lower, but still pretty distinct. Oh, someone said it's a bouncing ball call. I like that. <laughs> and I also wanted to um, very quickly share the call of the burrowing owl because um, burrowing owls in particular also have different calls. And uh, I know we've gone past the burrowing owl call, but I do want to play some of the more common calls. And some of them are similar to the Western screech owl, but they're a little bit different. So this is a burrowing owl call, one of them. So a little bit of that bouncing ball, a little bit higher pitched. And then they also have this hissing, like other this other call, and I'll play that for you right now. Uh, 
so yeah, this owl does have very distinct calls compared to the burrowing owl. I wanted to play them at the same time so you can kind of get an idea of, of what they might compare to. Um, I also wanted to point out that these owls, Western screech owls, are more often heard rather than seen. They spend their days either in a roost hole or looking out from the entrance where they can sometimes be harassed by groups of songbirds and then chased off. <laughs> They're pretty tolerant of people, but can even be found in suburbs or parks or attracted to forested yards with a nesting box. Um, they eat mostly mammals such as mice, shrews, and kangaroo rats, but they can also eat bats on top of that. Even um, moths, worms, uh, fish, birds, amphibians, and scorpions. So depending on where they live, they basically eat whatever small moving food they can get a hold of. And this will vary from season to season. All right, next. This is our next species. So before I show you which species this is, and I am watching the chat. So far, everyone's been correct, which I love. I love that. So these owls are medium-sized, slender, with, sl with long, prominent ear tufts up here. They are smaller than a great horned owl, but larger than a screech owl, about the size of a crow. Yes, they are long-eared owls. Their heads are roughly um, as wide as it is long, sort of look squarish, and they're fairly darker colored birds with buff or orange cinnamon, maybe, facial discs um, that are also long and narrow with vertical white lines between their bright yellow eyes. Sometimes they can form sort of a V shape or a Y shape. They have very intricate buff, brown, tan, um, depending uh, coloration on their feathers though. And the two pictures I've got here, both are looking almost directly at the camera. The one on the left, you'll see those, those, those brown, buff, white coloration speckling and striping. Uh, vertical line patterns on their breast and chest area compared to the back end where it's more of a darker brown modeled uh, camouflage layering that's happening. These owls are nocturnal and spend most of their days roosting in the densest part of pine thick cut trees, usually close to the trunk of the tree where their plumage and field markings provide excellent camouflage. In flight though, which I have two pictures of here, we can see large rounded wings with streaked underparts. And when they fly, their prominent ear tufts often slick back because they're just long feathers uh, from the wind blowing back over their head, over their face. Uh, they, so they all get streaked back against their bodies. So it may be difficult to identify long-eared owls in flight. But a key feature to look out for is their orange cinnamon colored facial disc in combinations with their flight pattern, which is really smooth and their, their wing shape overall. And I have an arrow here pointing to their cinnamon orangish facial disc. Um, oh, I do. Stacy, I'm so impressed <laughs> with your knowledge of how long some of our oldest owls are living. And I'm sure I've missed some of your comments and I apologize for that. But the oldest long living owl, Stacy is saying in the chat on record was at least 12 years and one month old. It had been banded in New York and was later found in Ontario, Canada. Super cool. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So long-eared owls, uh, just a little bit more about their nesting hunting behavior. So birders can look for long-eared owl nests in thick cut trees in dense vegetation that's right up next to adjacent scrubland or grassland, pretty open areas with short vegetation. Juveniles will leave the nest early and are called branchers. And that's what I have a picture of on the left there. So these young owls 
called branchers often hang out just outside of the nest or in nearby trees, but they're really easy to tell apart from adults because they still have their fluff, which is light brown downy with prominent V, that prominent V shape between their eyes. These branchers are still learning to be adults though on their own. So they're you know, still learning how to fly, still learning how to hunt. So when we do see them, you'll see them hopping or jumping, pulling themselves around branches with their wings and their bills. In winter, long-eared owls will often roost communally with other long-eared owls, but also crows, magpies, some other species of owls as well. Um, outside the breeding season, they can roost in groups up to 100 birds. And that's the other picture that I've got there on the right. They hunt on the wing, so by flying, above open grasslands and shrublands, by making low coursing passes back and forth over open ground areas. They rarely hunt before true dark, pitch dark, so we really won't see them at dusk but you may see them pop out just as it's getting its darkest. Um, and on no moon nights or new moon nights, that's when they really are successful. All right, next species. Um, these, owl, these owls are so pretty, they're so pretty. So these owls are medium sized, also crow sized with rounded heads, and I do have an asterisk there as well because they do technically have tufts, but they really, those tufts um, can be really difficult to see. They really only show themselves when the owls are startled or when the wind picks up from behind them and fluffs them up a bit. And I've got an arrow pointing at what those little tiny horned tufts right behind their, right behind their head there. For the most part at rest, they're rounded heads. So everyone got it right. This is a short-eared owl. Yeah. Oh, Stacy, thank you so much. I was waiting for your chat, for your message to come up. The oldest short-eared owl on record, Stacy says, was at least four years, four months old when it was shot in California in 1970. I do have to mention that um, owls and raptors, birds of prey, are protected. So shooting is very illegal. Uh, this four year, four month old owl was wearing a band that had been applied in British Columbia in 1966. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing. A little bit more about short-eared owls though, their wings are broad and smoothly rounded and they have a really short tail. They're larger than a pigeon, but smaller than a great horned owl, just to give you an idea of how uh, big they are. And I have this picture over on the right of the owl in flight. So you can see the smooth roundedness from the very edges of um, the very edges of their wings. A little bit more about a short-eared owl. Short-eared owl. Um, I do want it to point out their plumage coloration and field markings in particular. They do have a, a very prominent facial disc. Their faces are pale with bright yellow eyes accented with black outlines, sort of like they have some black eyeliner or eyeshadow on. Their breasts are heavily streaked and you can see that on the picture that's all the way on the right hand side there. Um, all of those streaks are usually brown to dark brown and their bellies are pale and buff colored. So they sort of blend in with those streaks. Their pale underwings though, um, have a dark comma shape mark near their wrist. And I've got an arrow um, pointing out where that is. And their upper wing shows a pale patch in the primaries and a lighter patch uh, on the side with the darker, sorry, and the lighter patches on their other side of their wings. And you can see that in the middle picture there. Both 
the edges of the wings show some dark fringes, almost as if they were dipped in some brown paint. As far as their nesting and hunting patterns go, uh, short-eared owls live and hunt in open areas with low vegetation like grasslands, meadows, short scrublands, savannas, marshes, dunes, even agricultural areas. And in winters, they've been spotted in all of those places. But in addition to that, they've been spotted in gravel pits and rock quarries. They nest on the ground, hidden in these low grasses and shrub areas. Uh, they are also the only, or they're one of very few, few owls that construct their own nests, which is very cool. They hunt on the wing during low light hours in the day, flying low over short vegetation and open areas. They, they flap with stiff wing beats and from rounded wings, giving them a moth-like, bouncy, boyish um, pattern. Um, bouncy, buoyant pattern. I'm sorry, that's what I meant to say. Sort of similar to a barn owl, but a little bit quicker because their wings are a little bit shorter. Their wingspans are a little bit shorter. Uh, also, they're really maneuverable in the air because their wings are so short and they're able to drop suddenly really quick to capture prey or climb up in the air to avoid um, other birds. If you are going to bird for this owl, uh, you can find them perching, in low, perching low in trees or on the ground near open areas where they hunt. And during breeding season, they're active all day and all night, but still preferring those low light times. All right, this is our last owl of the evening. I'm pretty sure that everyone will get this one. And if you are all paying attention, I will have a test for you in a minute there. So these owls are round headed. They're about the size of a robin with large round heads and no ear tufts. I actually am getting a few different answers in the chat, <laughs> um, but I'll give you the answer. This is a Northern Sawit owl. Uh, yeah, there we go. I do see some correct answers coming through. These owls are nocturnal and very hard to see during daylight hour, hours. They roost in dense vegetation and they'll typically be just above eye level and deep in the tree near the trunk. Their main defense mechanism, very similar to what we mentioned in the very beginning of the presentation, is to hold absolutely still um, if they're spotted in an effort to camouflage themselves in their surroundings. Even though this might seem like they're tame or okay with us getting closer, that is not the case. Even if we do see a northern owl and any wildlife for that matter, the goal is to not disturb them. We always want to give them their space. Uh, these owls are very well known for their color pattern and field markings. They're mottled brown with whitish spotted brown facial discs with a bright white Y and I've, uh, between their yellow eyes. And I've got an arrow showing that bright white Y. Uh, their bellies and underwings will sometimes have more white and tan uh, with some brown streaks and checkerboard patterns. But along their chests, they'll have some streaking going on. So you'll have this spotted versus streaking going on, depending on which side of the owl you're looking at. And uh, saw white owls are typically forest birds, uh, breeding in extensive wide open forests, sometimes over open habitat that's right next to dense trees. So you'll sometimes find these owls right on the edge of where the forest starts. Uh, they can also be found in mature forests, sort of deep in those thickets, where there'll be uh, an open understory where they can hunt and where there's water nearby. 
They can also nest in nest boxes, nesting boxes, if the rest of the habitat has what they need, but normally they'll nest in already made holes in trees by other birds or other rodents. Uh, juveniles or owlets, which are seen in the picture on the left there, are dark brown, showing no spots or speckles or streaking with a very creamy cinnamon or creamy yellow breast and belly. Juveniles and owlets will also have that bright white Y between their yellow eyes. They are sit and wait predators. So they'll kind of sit perched in the trees, patiently waiting for their prey to come by. And they eat mostly small mammals, hunting them at night from those low perches. Their favorite meals include deer mice and white-footed mice, but they also include some small mammals, shrews, voles, bats, chipmunks, and squirrels. Um, these owls, though, are also preyed upon by great horned owls, western screech owls, which we did talk about both those species, and other raptors like cooper's hawks and peregrine falcons. And uh, Sonia, our lovely moderator, is mentioning that a group of owls is called a parliament, which is very cool. Thank you so much, Sonia. And before we jump into our quiz, I very quickly wanted to share with you the call of a northern sawwit owl. So hang tight, let me get to there. Here we go. So sort of a, um, a, a continuous beeping that's coming from these owls. And here's another. Very continuous. <laughs> All right. Um, so I do see I do see a question in the chat very quickly that I would like to point out. Um, Mocha Joe says, "Great white or snowy owls are they not included?" Um, that's a great question. Uh, we do have uh, snowy owls in North America. However, we don't have them in Nevada. So I don't include them in tonight's presentation, but uh, in the All About Birds website by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, I would very highly suggest that you uh, take a look at them. Uh, there's a lot of really great information on that website and I'll share with you the, that resource once we get down to the very end. Oh, Stacy, thank you so much. You put it in the chat for us. So helpful, Stacy. Thank you. All right. So here's where I hope you were paying attention. We're going to test our knowledge. We're just about at the end of our presentation. Get ready. Get your typing ready. I hope that we're all, we're, that we are all pros at this point. So I would like everyone to please use the chat box to identify the owl. I will give you the answer, but just to help you a little bit. I also put a little owl holding a sign of all the different owls that we talked about this evening. So you can kind of look to see um, which owl we're talking about. And we will only mention, I will only test you once for each species. All right, so get ready, here we go. And I'll give everyone just a few moments too. So what is this owl? And I don't have any other, oh, here we go. Everyone is guessing long-eared owl. You are correct. I'm hoping that we all get 100%. Let's see if we can do that. All right, yep, this is a long-eared owl. Really good job. Next. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness, this is a... This is a northern sawwit owl. I did see a short-eared owl come up in the chat as an answer, 
but that's okay. You know, we may be new to birding. That's totally all right. That's why we're here to learn. This is a Northern Sawit Owl. Good job, everybody. Next. And if you are watching not live, um, the reason why I'm not saying anything right away is I'm waiting for some answers to come through. All right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, everyone is saying a Western screech owl. That is correct. This is not a great horned owl. The tufts look a little long, very similar to a great horn, but the coloration, the field markings are pretty darn different. Um, someone in the chat said, Great horned owl, just kidding, Western screech owl. <laughs> so yeah, this is a Western screech owl, really good job. Next. That's okay, Mary. Good job, Amber. Good job, Stacy. Good job, Jennifer, Sonia. Gabriella, Amber, wonderful. Yes, this is a short-eared owl. And the reason why I chose this picture in particular is birders will often find a short-eared owl in this position while hunting. And along the wrist, sorry, along the leading edge of the wing, you'll see that comma, that dark comma shape along the wrist. And then the fringes of the wings look like they've been dipped in brown paint. All right, next. Yes. Yes, Stacy, Julie, Amber, Gabriella, Karen, Mary. Yeah, this is a barn owl. Really good job. I think the barn owls in particular are very distinct featured. Their field markings are so different and unique. Yes, this is my favorite. Thank you. All right, next. Yes, everyone is correct so far. This is a great horned owl. Uh, I chose this picture in particular because this is how birders will typically see a great horned owl, perched up in the trees, not necessarily tucked away, but not necessarily on the very outsides of the tree either. Um, this is not an eagle owl. Um, eagle owls and great horned owls are very similar. Eagle owls, um, will have barring, downward um, barring on their breast and chest area. Great horned owls have these little squiggly brown and white lines across their chest. That is called vermiculation. That is one of the key features that we use to tell an eagle owl from a great horned owl. But really good job. Yeah, this is a great horned owl. A great horned owl is one of the most common owls we have. They can live just about anywhere. They're not picky about their nesting habits and they're not picky about their diets. They can eat just about anything they can get their talons and their beak on. All right, lastly, one of the more charismatic owls. This is a burrowing owl. Everyone is correct in the chat. Awesome job, everybody. I'm very impressed actually. Uh, because some of these owls look similar. They're hard to tell apart, but really, really great job. All right. Thank you so much for participating in the chat. So before we go, I do want to point out some very helpful, very useful resources. On the screen, there are five books. I've got all of them. <laughs> I have a problem. I read these books from front to back. They're so useful. My favorite is the one all the way on the top right, the Peterson Field Guide Western Birds. I take it everywhere with me. It's not particularly heavy. It's easy to navigate through. I've got bookmarks in it and it's all highlighted and marked up. I take it just about everywhere with me. If, but if you're looking for some online or app resources, I would very much recommend eBird online and there is an app as well. Audubon, the Merlin ID app online is super useful. Uh, the app I have on my phone as well. The Raptor ID app is fairly new to my knowledge and I haven't really used it a lot, but I have used it a little bit and I absolutely love it. Um, also the allaboutbirds.org that is from, 
That is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And it's one of my favorites, but really get outside, practice your skills, look for birds, look for signs of birds. We talked about all these different species, their hunting patterns, their field markings, where to look for them, where they find their habitat. I would just recommend going outside. Um, oh, also someone in the chat mentioned Sibley has a great app for $20. It allows side-by-side -side comparisons between similar looking species. And Julie, thank you. And then Julie says BirdNet, the BirdNet app identifies birds by calls or song. That's super cool, so thank you. So very quickly, I'm gonna go up to our Q&A box to see if we've answered all of our questions. Looks like we have. That's because Sonia's a rock star. Thank you so much, Sonia. And lastly, thank you everyone uh, for coming tonight. Talking about owls is one of my favorite things. I'm glad that everyone was able to join us this evening. I am absolutely over my hour, but that's okay. Just by a few moments. Um, this was wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Right after we hang up, there will be a survey that will pop up on your screen. Please take the survey. It helps us improve programs. Uh, we welcome all of your feedback. Please be honest too, because we have some of these webinars once a week, sometimes seven day, some seven times a week. So as we teach more, as we give more programs, we want more feedback so we can make them even better for next time. And of course, join us for programs like this. This program will be available on the on our YouTube page in a few days, couple weeks, just give us some time. We have a lot of uh, presentations going up and I really wanna thank everyone so, so much for coming this evening. If you do get outside, please embrace the outdoors, be safe, be responsible. Um, if you do have any further questions that we maybe didn't get to this evening, my contact information is on your screen. Oh, I do see a question that popped up before we say goodbye. Um, the question is, when going birding for owls, what would be the best time to look for owls? In general, that's a really, that's a really good, great question. In general, I would say um, dawn and dusk, typically dusk, most of the owls that we have in Nevada are nocturnal slash early duskers or crepuscular. So they're starting to leave their roost, starting to leave their nest right before it gets dark. But you really wanna be looking out and paying attention to the area around you. There are only a couple birds that can be seen during the day, notably the burrowing owl, but it all depends on where you look too. So I hope that sort of an answer that helps but it's not necessarily the time of day only, it's the time of day, where you're looking, where you're watching, where you're walking and looking for different habits of these owls, different the locations for these owls, where their habitat is. Um, and then one other question that came up was, what organization is this? This is the Nevada Department of Wildlife. I work for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. It's a state organization. I am the wildlife education coordinator in the Southern region. I work with some pretty incredible folks that are so smart, knowledgeable, and very passionate about the work that they do. And there are a lot of us, I'm not the only one. So uh, if you do happen to come in our office, say hello to everybody, we're all super nice or we try to be. And uh, we also have other topics of interest, other topics of passion that we really love to educate others on. So check back for other webinars coming up. Check back on our YouTube page for other webinars being posted. This will be one of them. So thank you so, so much, everybody. I see thank yous in the chat. Also, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. And uh, I will say a big thank you to Sonia. She rocked it. Thank you so much, Sonia. Um, 
Thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and we will see you next time.